Okay, so Jensen Button has, has released his, his, his autobiography and there's a section, and this is the bit I want to quite quite focus on. Uh, there's a section where he, he mentions his, his his three years as teammate Lewis Hamilton at McLaren. Um and every teammate of Lewis Hamilton has basically stated the same thing. Apart from Nico Rosberg who physically could not stand him. Alonso was just I I think again couldn't really stand him too much. They didn't really get on. Um, Bottas, we haven't really heard much about his relationship with Hamilton, but because we haven't heard much, I don't I haven't done any joint interviews together really. They haven't tried to do what McLaren did with Button and Hamilton, which was to pass them off as really good friends. The difference between Hamilton between with Button and the rest of his and the rest of Hamilton's teammates is Jensen's dad sold Lewis Hamilton's dad a go kart engine from when Hamilton was still karting after Jensen had gone up to the junior ranks and then was going through single-seaters to get to F1. So there was a business transaction, and they were friends away from... They did, they, they did interact at, on, the, on, the, on the, the racing circuit, at race meets and, 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 and competitions, um, before Lewis got to F1. So the families knew each other, um, and this is quoted in the book. Another thing that came out, and this is what... Jensen Button, who is a very well-spoken individual, uh, came from a very similar background of hard-working, not from except- exceptional wealth, but middle-class working or working to middle-class backgrounds. So they were hard-working families um, from the south of England. Um, and he states that when he arrived at, uh, at McLaren from a, a championship-winning team, so he's come with a championship and a constructors title, and he brought some of his engineer with him and a, and a few of his mechanics with him. And his group and his team, the management team, including his father. Lewis Hamilton didn't seem to be annoyed with this because McLaren was his toy. Not share the toy. I don't want to share the toy. And the thing was, McLaren had had Lewis from a very young age, from like the age of 11 or 12. They had basically funded his, his youth development, um, go through all the youth categories and the junior categories or the, the minor categories as well to get his to F1. They had basically got him through there and aided his father financially and, and they basically put him through fast tracked him. Ron Dennis's master plan. So this is Lewis's team. Alonso did not get on with Hamilton at all. Physically could not stand him. Walked away. Went went to I think Renault Ferrari, he, just, he could physically not get on with, with Lewis at all. There was no working relationship to develop the car. It was Lewis or no way. Alonso felt frustrated. And that was quite evident with uh, the breakdown in relationship there. Fair enough. We get that. It was a famous explosion ten years ago when Lewis Kirsten came on the scene. It was a famous meltdown. We get that. So Alonso doesn't like working with him. There's allegations of racism against Alonso, which are false, but we won't go into that. Button comes in, another world champion, because Alonso is a double world champion, Button's a world champion, comes in. Now Lewis is also a world champion you know, at this point, but, but another world champion comes in, another competitor, he's been around the, on the F1 grid for a long, long time by this point, Hamilton hasn't, crucial. Button's raced at several teams at this point, Hamilton's only been at the one. So Button's gone from team to team to team, it's one races at two separate, two separate teams, He's won a title, won the Constructors Championship. Um, he's been around for, at this point, uh, a long time, 10 years, whereas Hamilton's been around for three years. So he's got that seven years' experience of F1 and the machinations and politics. And he, he, in his book, he does quote in his interview with the BBC, and I'm quoting the interview here, I'm quoting the website, I'm not saying it's 100% correct. This is what I've read of this morning. He, he quotes that, his relationship with Lewis, albeit polite and, and friendly, is, is not friendly as in good mates, we'll go down the pub, we'll take each other out, you know, let's get the families together, let's have a barbecue kind of like real close friendship. He says it was it was polite and, and, and forthright and respectful, but uh, Hamilton was very, very aloof and distant. And as time went on, obviously, Jensen Button was a very upbeat character, and his dad's very upbeat, and the group of engineers and his sponsors were all a bit more positive, as in their attitude and their out- they're more outgoing. And it did raise the mood in, in McLaren. They got race wins together. They won no titles, but 
Jensen found that Lewis moves on and obviously we've had a couple of drivers come in and replace Lewis and now Alonso is back and Button's obviously now retired but for a while Alonso was Button's teammate and they got on rather well three world titles between them um, no doubt that they are both epically brilliant drivers and well respected but he mentioned that even after Lewis moved on and Button was still at McLaren it's now Jensen's team and Magnussen's team etc again when they were bumping into each other on the grid or down you know, down pit lane or in press conferences because you're not going to be around each other 24-7 anymore when they would come and come across each other it was it was polite and, and respectful but you couldn't really let's say with another driver on the on the parade lap and they go around in the back of the van and they're all waving you wouldn't really have a conversation with him every other driver on the grid you could sit down for half an hour and go oh, well, how's your off week been or, or how you found the conditions or what you know and you could chat with them and be more affable and it's it's a well known fact that every teammate Lewis Hamilton has had has had similar experiences they find him that it's, it's got to be my team and, and Rosberg was a bit annoyed with Hamilton because Rosberg had been at Mercedes from the inception of the team he was there when Schumacher was there it was, it, Rosberg was the team guy who'd helped develop the car from a no hoper to championship winner he had been there the entire time Hamilton comes along and basically makes it known that it's now his team. And and Rosberg felt that we should be treated as equals here, if not treat me as the superior driver, even though you've won the title before. I've developed this car, I've been with the team from inception, I've worked with all the engineers, I've I've worked with the team principal, I've I've, I've really worked very hard to get the car where it is. And obviously they famously didn't get on. Rosberg wins the title last year, decides I'm leaving the sport, I'm walking away. And they go their karting days, go back, and they were apparently friends back in their karting days, allegedly. They were on different teams. But they do go back, they, they joined the karting circuit at the same time, they, they joined the, the junior ranks at the same time, they're exactly the same age. It just turns out that their so-called friendship... Was it a friendship? It, their relationship definitely soured at their time at Mercedes. Um, severely. Uh, really badly. Uh, so, there you go. Jensen said that it was an interestingly... It, it was... It just didn't... It felt a bit off. He's not saying negative things about Hamilton. saying, oh, he's a terrible teammate and he would deliberately still do things to annoy me. He just found the atmosphere a bit cold, and and the, the whole working relationship was professional. They got the best out of the car they could. Um, they worked hard as, together, and it was a positive atmosphere. And then, unfortunately, Jensen's dad passed away a couple of years ago, and that's one of the reasons why Jensen Button decided to walk away from the sport because he just lost the joy for it. Um, and you can understand that he just he lost the love of a sport that he had been involved with for. For 16 years, and he just went, No, it's just not with me anymore. And that's and that is completely understandable and fair enough. But his his comments on the the time he spent as a teammate with Lewis are striking, very striking, uh, and very interesting. Um, I've, I've never heard of a driver openly saying, Whilst he's not officially retired from all motors, but he's retired from F1. I've never heard of a driver basically saying this, his character is very cold and very aloof. And that's that's basically it. He's not saying he's a nasty person. Other drivers might say a different thing, but all Gen uh, Lewis's teammates have basically, in press conferences or you could see with their body language or after they left, have basically said it, he was difficult to be a teammate with. But, and I feel a bit for Valtteri Bottas because he's got to drive exactly the same car, <coughs> and he's he's got a. You know, try his best, and he has won races, and he has he's done really well this season. And we're not disputing Valtteri Bottas is an exceptionally skilled driver, no doubt about that. Um, and he's exceptionally affable. You can he's very approachable, with Valtteri Bottas. He, he he drives around with a smile on his face. Um, 
But when it he's put in a press conference with Lewis, the the attitude changes. Um, it's not there's a bit of tension there. Um, and there could be multiple reasons for this. But it's very interesting what what Jensen has Jensen Button has said uh, in his book, and in the interview he gave a, a, about the book and how their families went back to when they were youngsters coming through the the junior ranks and going forward, how their parents knew each other. So it wasn't if they were strangers when they actually got on the group and started competing against each other and then were teammates, you would think it would be a bit more, oh, how are you doing? Nice, you know, it's, it's great that we're teammates now. It was a bit more different than that, um, in a matter of words. It was a bit more, I've got a share. I, I think... What McLaren have done is made a bit of a mistake with the way they sp gave Lewis Hamilton a silver spoon. Um, he then turned his back on the team quite famously because they didn't offer him as much money as Mercedes. They just they said, "This is how much we're going to offer you." Mercedes offered him more. The silver spoon from Mercedes was bigger, so you can see some of the mindset of Lewis Hamilton here. Um, it's not that McLaren are a bad team. They are struggling at the moment with, with the car they've got, and that is a different story. They are a famous team on the grid. They've won a lot, of, and they're now a car manufacturer as well in the UK. So it's not as if they're just a race team. They they do manufacture road cars as well now. They are actually a, a manufacturer as well, in a sense. It's complicated with McLaren because they use client engines um, for their race cars, but their road cars, and now they now develop their own engines for them. And uh, a friend of mine works at their factory in in, in, in uh, Brookwood, in, near Woking. So I, I do know a lot about McLaren. Um, I've been past their factory multiple times um, on the train, on, on the road. Uh, I know uh, I've got a friend who works there. So it's an interesting, um, interesting team. And it's a very famous team. And it's hit a rough patch. I mean, Ferrari went through this patch in the 90s for a while. There were a period of time where Ferrari just could not win a race and were breaking down constantly. But it's very interesting what Button says. Would have Lewis Hamilton have stayed with the McLaren team now? Had he stayed, would they have decided to go for this this, this Honda engine? Uh, Jensen's are, are known for is quite well known for developing cars from and, and being a uh, good development driver as well for a team if you want to look figure out what's wrong or right with the car he, he's, he's good at uh, managing a car um, and giving good feedback uh, was it the right move to let him go it probably was I don't think Lewis would have developed the car as well I don't think he would have, he would have enjoyed being at the back of the grid um, as much I don't think he would have enjoyed trying to develop a car a, basically a brand new engine setup and and how that affected you know the car going forward, um, but we're going to leave that there. And it's very interesting what Jensen Button has said, um, and he's a well-spoken man, and he's a very educated man, and he's he's very articulate, and he's very polite, and he always comes across with a very positive attitude, and he seems to be well well liked in in motorsport circles, and in, in, in all that's said about him, he's, he's always come back in quite pleasant terms. So we've got to take what he says quite seriously that. The relationship he had with Lewis Hamilton was was not strained, but strange. He says it was a bit strange. So, um, it, um, it's interesting. Um, it doesn't come across all negative about Lewis, but I can see a lot of if Nico Rosberg was to give an interview or Alonso after they retire, what they also say about their working relationship with Lewis Hamilton. I would I would definitely say if they're allowed to speak freely. Because a lot of these, these drivers are under contract and they have to toe the party line, so to speak. If they were to speak 100% freely, what they would actually come out with, it would really, really surprise me. I think Lewis Hamilton probably comes out in a very negative light. Regardless of all the titles he's won and all the races he's won and the records he's broken, and they are amazing feats, but um, we are in an era of uncompetitive cars um, and stupid rigs and stupid amounts of tech. I, I think we should go back a step maybe, take some of these electricals out and make the drivers actually drive. Um, and then you'll see if he's the best driver. Um, and then you'll see if Lewis Hamilton's the best. But that's another debate for another day. And I'm not the FIA and I'm not um, Liberty Media. But it's very interesting um, uh, what Jensen Button has said. Now he has retired and he's taken a step back from F1.
what the other drivers say and when Lewis when they all retire or if, if they decide to take a step back from the sport for a while if they were to give interviews about their relationship working relationship and personal relationship with Lewis Hamilton what would they say I would be surprised if it wasn't much along the base minimum same line he's very aloof and he's very very strange um, you can see that it's a very forced relationship I think when it comes to press conferences I, I don't think the drivers really warm to him but that's that's up for debate. I'm not saying Lewis Hamilton's a bad person. It just seems that he conflicts with a lot of the drivers on the grid. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe and please leave comments below. I'll have another video for you later today.